Good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Vikram Kanna, and I'll be speaking on biology of bone distraction. Distraction osteogenesis can be defined as the mechanical induction of bone tissue produced after the section and slow separation of the two bone segments, stabilized and subjected through a slow, gradual, and stable distraction. This is possible due to the inherent capacity of bone tissue to regenerate and remodel according to the mechanical and tension forces to which it is gradually submitted. The physiological bone growth is a result of the tension exercised over the bone spices and the soft tissue resistance, which is on the same plane, but in the opposite direction. First described by Alessandro, but later perfected by Elizero. Principles of distraction by Elizarov and Bastian. The osteotomy should be of low energy, preserving the vascularization and soft tissue envelope. The fixation mechanism applied to both segments must be stable. After the corticotomy, a latency period will be applied. The distraction rate must be appropriate for the level and the type of bone in which osteogenesis is performed the biology of distraction osteogenesis. Critical factors for regenerate are the stability of fixation, the amount of damage at osteotomy site, rate of distraction, and rhythm of distraction. Osteotomy and corticotomy. The distraction osteogenesis begins with the transfer separation oblique fracture of the two fragments, either from metaphyseal or diphyseal region. This method of fracture can be divided into three types by uh, osteotomy, corticotomy, or osteoclasis. The osteogenic potential of the osteotomy or corticotomy depends on three major factors. The location in the bone, the type of technique used, and the latency period subsequently applied. The healing occurs with the periosteal blood supply. However, Elizarov felt that the intramedullary blood supply also has a role in healing. The term corticotomy was coined by Elizarov. It constitutes a low energy cutting of the cortical bone uh, by which we are trying to preserve the periosteal and endosteal circulation. A corticotomy would reliably, reliably produce complete osteotomy at the intended location with least amount of damage to the bone and soft tissue. Coming to the corticotomy types, uh, through direction, it may be transverse, oblique, spiral, or step cut. Exposure-wise, it may be percutaneous, minimally invasive, or open. And uh, according to the device used, a power saw may be used, osteotome may be used, or a jiggly saw. Coming to the classical corticotomy. The classical corticotomy is uh, described as a percutaneous subperiosteal metaphyseal osteotomy done with osteotome. Corticotomy modification include a subperiosteal corticotomy with two small incisions or, um, or, or a subperiosteal corticotomy than under vision in which the cortex is drilled. A thing to uh, understand is that the periosteum is very important, hence all the corticotomies have to be subperiosteal. Corticotomy types, uh, in a, if we go for a transverse corticotomy, it is a technically easier to perform and it is easier to visualize. If we are doing a spiral or an oblique corticotomy, there is more bone surface resulting in a good regenerate and it is inherently more stable. Coming to the site of osteotomy or corticotomy, the best region is the metaphysis of the bone. The reasons are that it has a massive trabecular region uh, which is rich in collateral vascularization and it has a higher potential for fracture recovery. Latency period. It is a period of rest which is given after corticotomy 
the latency period allows an organization of the hematoma and the fibrous tissue matrix which will serve as a mold to the osteoblast proliferation that on the first 24 hours produce osteoid at the bone surfaces this period also allows for a periosteal and endosteal revascularization a 7 day latency period allowed a greater regeneration at the distraction focus and increased vasculature in opposition to a distraction osteogenesis without latency period characterized by fibrous tissue formation there are several factors that influence the appropriate latency period such as the age osteotomy or location the soft tissue trauma or the existence of primary pathology a longer latency period may allow a premature consolidation and a shorter latency period might predispose to a bone non union coming to segment stabilization it can be done either with a circular fixator on a uni or a unilateral fixator so the ideal lengthening apparatus avoids then torsion or shear allows for cyclic micro motion allows weight bearing and allows modifications the advantages of a circular fixator that is the elizero fixator is that it controls the axial alignment we can use it for simultaneous corrections of the deformity differential lengthening is possible and extension it can be extended across joints coming to the rate and rhythm there have been many uh, studies uh, to determine the ideal rate and rhythm in case of lengthening the entire gap at one time produ will uh, produced non union all cases sporadic daily distraction 1 to 1.5 mm uh, produced non union in all cases 0.25 mm twice a day led to premature consolidation 0.25 mm 6 hourly which was advocated by elizero uh, resulted in all uh, all uh, regenerates to be united and remodeled uh, to normal bone auto distractor uh, the fibrous interzone is barely seen and the uh, it leads to premature consolidation 0.5 mm 6 hourly produces less osteoid and less mineralization bone tissue engineering the bone tissue engineering requires three primary components a progenitor or stem cell to produce the desired tissue which is uh, which is uh, uh, available in the surrounding tissue growth factors to provide the necessary inductive signals to the progenitor cells again which is received from the surrounding tissue and a scaphoid scaffold to guard to guide appropriate three dimensional configuration of the growth growing tissue which is provided with a stable fixator distracting the um, osteotomy site now coming to the local and systemic responses triggered by distraction histogenesis these are mainly uh, signal uh, these signals are the these responses are mainly triggered by the mechano transductional signals like c for c jun fak yap uh, signal uh, signaling pathways which cause the bmps inflammatory markers angiogenesis markers to increase along with this along with these local responses the systemic responses also occur whereas in which the mscs and epcs are mobilized circulating cytokine levels are also changed and uh, remote remote, uh, remote bone modeling also increases the distraction period during the distraction period the bone segments undergo a stable and constant tension force and becoming metabolically active during this regenerative process the bone tissue formation can reach 200 to 400 micrometer per day 
which is four to eight times superior to the normal physiological bone growth. Coming to the stages of distraction osteogenesis, uh, at the end of latency, uh, these are the uh, histological images of the uh, various stages of osteogenesis. Um, in this, at the end of latency, we can see an in inflammatory response. After distraction occurs, there is, uh, we can see some amount of bone formation. And after 17, after 31 days, we can see consolidation and remodeling occurring. Now the onset of distraction, that is distraction week one. The tensile forces across the osteotomy site arrange proliferating fibroblasts into linear fibrils. Fibrous interzone divides the regenerated bone in equal parts and it is rich in chondrocytes, fibroblasts and ovoid cell morphologically intermediate between the fibroblast and the osteoblast. The fibrous interzone remains, an a, remains avascular during most part of the distraction. After, its, after the completion of distraction, it is rapidly vascularized and mineralized during the consolidation period. Coming to the distraction osteogenesis week two, as, as the distraction gap increases, the fibrous interzone remains 4 mm thick. And at the conclusion of the process, the fibrous interzone is the last to ossify. Adjacent to the fibrous interzone on each side is the primary mineralization front, which contains a high density of proliferating osteoblasts. Now coming to the week three of distraction osteogenesis, here we can see <coughs> in between there is a fibrous interzone surrounded by a primary mineralization front and we can see two uh, areas uh, surrounded by areas of uh, micro column formation. They are basically uh, these osteoblasts which are found in the primary mineralization front undergo primary mineralization in regions of newly formed capillaries and vascular sinuses, leading to the formation of columns of bones resembling stalagmites and stalactites, known as zone of microcolumn formation. Post-distraction consolidation. When the distraction ends, primary mineralization front advances from each end towards the center, bridging the fibrous interzone. Sequential mineralization of the osteoid occurs during the activation and especially during the consolidation phase, starting with, within the surrounding microcolumn formation, which, is, which then proceeds to bridge the fibrous interzone. Coming to remodeling, during the consolidation period, mineralization of new bone is completed and bone remodeling occurs, resulting in the formation of mature lamellar bone with marrow. During the distraction period, uh, occurs an enormous angiogenic response. At the lengthening site, a peak blood circulation nine times superior to that of the normal bone tissue may occur. This hypervolumia persists for a significant amount of time, as it was shown that after 17 weeks of the procedure, local volumia remains twice that of the normal value. Eliezer of experiments demonstrate that mitochondria of the skeletal muscle tissue hypertrophied and became more active, resulting in the increased cellular volume and functional activity of the cell's nucleus. Here we see the differential expression of signaling molecules due to, during the various phases of distraction osteogenesis, in which in the initial latency and the active distraction phase, the inflammatory markers are increased as well as the BMP markers and the angiogenic markers. Whereas in the consolidation phase, the osteogenic factors uh, suddenly increase 
there as the inflammatory and the angiogenic markers they uh, go on a downtrend in conclusion uh, i think the main purpose of the biology of the bone distraction is the use of uh, these various um, markers inflammatory markers and the uh, osteogenic markers to improve the quality of regenerate and maybe hasten the progress of our um, uh, lengthening uh, this includes biophysical interventions like weight bearing exercises uh, accordion technique pulse electromagnetic field hyperbaric oxygen lipers extra corporal shock wave therapy then drugs like lithium magnesium bisphosphonates then biological factors like platelet rich plasma levodopa parathyroid bmps so all these i think in the long run we can incorporate these uh, factors and uh, we can um, you know help these factors may help in the faster recovery of uh, uh, of the regenerate and faster healing of the regenerate person thank you